We all have that friend. The one that you're really excited to hang out with until you're about to play Smash and he's hovering Ike. You roll your eyes and sigh as you lock into your squishy Day 5 Peach and mentally prepare yourself to get near to up aired over and over and over again. Well today, that's going to change. Hello everybody, my name is Lady Luck herself, and believe it or not, a lot of players struggle with sword fighters, aka sorties, due to their speed, priority, and range. No matter if you main a heavy, a zoner, or a rushdown character, I'm going to teach you in this video 5 general ways to beat sword fighters in Smash Ultimate. Don't you mean, we'll teach you? Where are my manners? Joining me today is my good friend Glyph Money, aka G Money. He's new to the whole YouTube thing, but he's a zoning expert and a diehard Robin K. Rule main. It's true. I once edge guarded on the setup next to me. That's how hard I zone. <laughs> it's a little bit of an exaggeration, but can confirm. As always, timestamps, social media, including both of our Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as featured players, can all be found in the video description below. Without further ado, let's get started. Swords win trades. The first and defining feature that makes swordies so problematic are their signature blades. Every swordsman comes with a disjoint, and disjoints are great at winning trades. By definition, a disjoint is a hitbox separate from a character's hurtbox, their body. Disjoints are useful because they allow the user to attack from safety, since they have no chance of getting hit if your hitboxes overlap. Another cool thing about disjoints is even though they clank on the ground, they are not capable of clanking in the air. So when two aerials collide, whichever one is disjointed will win. Just like in real life, if you throw your arm out to clank with a blade, you're gonna get cut. Because of this, as well as their above average range, sorties can use their attacks to control space, clank with projectiles, and win trades with relative ease. When fighting a sortie, sometimes it seems like a good idea to just run in and overwhelm them with attacks, but a good player will be able to stuff out your approach the moment you intrude on their space. Instead, try to avoid trading with sorties with slippery movement, or better yet, the next tip we have lined up. Sorties are the aggressors. In almost every case, you can bet on the person holding the sword to be setting the pace of the fight. Cause I mean, what else are they gonna be doing? Cloud could shoot another blade beam at you, but he knows as well as you do it's not gonna be winning in the game. The pressure this constant aggression creates can be absolutely horrifying, but let's talk about how to leverage it to your advantage. At the start of the game, we can usually expect them to be throwing an aggressive option. Depending on the stage or their kit, that's gonna boil down to either a short hop aerial or maybe a dash attack. They're also likely expecting you to choose a defensive option, like dropping down and blocking. Instead of doing that, try pushing some aggression of your own. Get up in the air and try putting a fast aerial in the space that you expect them to be moving into. This will A, catch them off guard, getting you a little mental advantage, but B, get you a little extra percent to start the game off. Not everyone has the luxury of doing something like this, mind you. Maybe you're too slow to get into the air, or your character doesn't have the frame data to contest a sword. In these cases, your job instead is just to close the gap the slightest bit more before you put your shield up. Pushing just that little bit closer before blocking is the difference between starting a combo of your own or just resetting neutral again. If you do this right, you're going to find that your opponent starts leaning more on their grabs because they're not hitting you with their sword. This is weird to say, but that's actually great news for you. Their game plan is just hit with sword. So anytime you're making them not do that, it's a big step in the right direction. With punishing. Since we now know that sorties are not only the aggressors, but they tend to win trades, how do we build damage without taking too much damage ourselves? Well, that's where with punishing comes in. When a sortie attempts to control space with their huge disjoints, sometimes the best thing to do is let them attack first. Sorties historically have sluggish frame data to contrast their range. And even in Ultimate, the attacks that tend to be fast, strong, and far-reaching suffer from loads of end lag. When their attacks are spaced perfectly on shield, these moves can be near impossible to punish coupled with shield stun. If the attack whiffs, however, it becomes much more accessible. Use your movement to tempt your opponent into swinging, and then punish their attempt with an attack of your own. 
This is called whiff punishing. Projectiles make whiff punishing a breeze as you can punish from a range. Just remember that some projectiles have startup, and others can be eaten by swords. Here's a tip for whiff punishing with projectiles. Most sorties will wait until they're close to the ground to swing, so just wait and bam! Practically undodgeable percent. And maybe even a combo if you got the right kit for it. Exploit their recoveries. A trait shared across all sorties is the recovery is extremely vulnerable while below the stage. The exact area we're talking about varies from character to character, but it's lethal if you know just how to abuse it. So the first thing we need to do is condition your opponent to go low. That's easy enough to do, you just assume that their recovery of choice is going to be to air dodge to ledge and make sure you're covering that. Once they see you doing that enough, they're gonna start dipping down. That's your chance to move in for the kill. You want to be aiming for just above the area where they want to start their up B. From there, all you need to do is put a hitbox out and wait for them to die. Now, keep in mind this comes with a very hefty risk as well, because you're gonna trade with the up B, assuming they remember to put it out at all. Now, as long as you know to tech, that's fine, expect to do so. It's just a lot less exciting to get that kill when it also involved you dropping a stock as well. It's also worth noting here that counters are especially good at killing these characters, so just drop off the stage, press down B, and watch them weep softly as you gently flick them back into the void. Counter their counters. For our final tip, we're going to counter their counter. No, seriously, counter is one of the most abusable things in all sorty kits, save for maybe Corrin. Never let the possibility of a counter out of your mind, as skilled players can sense when you're on an aggressive streak and easily turn your own attacks against you. If you're getting countered a lot, you're probably throwing attacks too often. Instead, be measured with your attacks. Don't go for every follow-up, go for the follow-ups that are guaranteed, aka the difference between combos and strings. There's merit to waiting too. An opponent anticipating your attack and reacting too early can be just as dead as an opponent reacting too late. Know that when you're pressing your advantage is when you'll most likely see a counter. Counters are the panic button, so your job is to be scary enough that they feel as if they may die. And then bait the counter and make that fear a reality. One last thing, counters lose very hard to grabs of any form. So don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Welcome back! How did you enjoy the video? Thank you so much for joining us today, Glyph Money. And all of his information, including his Twitter and all of that, will be in the video description down below. But um, I think it's about time for you to go, buddy. Thank you, Lady Luck, for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. But now I have to go back to where I belong. The Zoner Realm. That was close. I hate zoners, oh my god. Thank you again so much for watching to the very end of the video. If you enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe, and leave me a comment about more things you'd like to see here. I'm moving away from just Peach Tutorials, which is what the rest of my channel is based off if you're new here. So feel free to tell me anything, like discussing current meta, or theories, tier lists, or even things about me if you want to get to know me better. Also, how did you like the collab? This is really new for me, but if you enjoyed it, feel free to suggest more people you'd like to see me collab with. I got a few in mind, and hopefully we can snag them. As far as a schedule, I shoot for two videos a month, but it depends on how busy I get. But I do stream weekly on Twitch, Monday through Wednesday, and sometimes Thursdays and Fridays, if I feel like it. If you like the channel and would like to support me and also get some unique rewards in the process, consider joining my Patreon. I offer anything from early access to scripts, my personal Snapchat for behind the scenes and also just shameless selfies, or even lessons if you would like to be taught in the way of Peach by yours truly. <laughs> I also want to take a moment and give a curtsy to the tier 3 patron I have, Super Strut Kindorf. Thank you so much for your contribution. It's deeply appreciated. And I think that's about it. Have a lovely afternoon, an amazing weekend, and as always, may the RNG be in your favor. Take it easy.